It's the weather. It's here for us. He has to answer the door. It's here for us. Do something. Stay home. Pizza. Stay away from the you door. Stop the weather. Protect us. Pizza. You didn't know or anything. No, 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 no. Don't answer. You're stupid to open the door. He has to open the door now. You got to do it. Do it. Be in trouble. Poison. This is for you. He's working with them. He's part of the plot. This is for you. Shut the door. Shut it. Don't eat it. You're stupid to open. I hate you. We hate you. And you did some activities, especially when you're lazy and you sleep too much. Stop staring. I don't do that. No, you can't stop. No. Are you blind? No, 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 don't open it. He has to open the box. Don't eat it. A 
lot of schizophrenics in particular get something called thought blocking, which is where they will be talking and suddenly their thoughts will just be stopped. Um, and that can lead to a lot of thought confusion. They also get paranoid um, delusions, which are when they think something that isn't real. So for instance, delusions and thought confusion often go together where a person with schizophrenia will think that their thoughts are being broadcasted, so they think that other people can hear their thoughts. And they also think that um, other people are transmitting thoughts and putting them into their heads. And all of this leads to what psychiatrists would call a lack of insight. So they would be unable to question their mental state. So one in five people with schizophrenia, one in 25 people with schizophrenia commit suicide. So obviously something needs to be done to help these people. Now what will cause schizophrenia? Well there's a dopamine hypothesis. And sorry if there are any biologists out there, but I'll just explain this by proving. Um, there's a neurotransmitter called dopamine, and when there is an excess of dopamine in the mesocortical, um, mesolimbic system in the brain, um, it can cause um, symptoms of schizophrenia such as hallucinations. So what happens is the dopamine will get released, and it will get taken into um, the next neuron. So these are the nerve cells in the brain. So the mesocortical will be transmitted from one to the other.
And here is the last picture, self-portrait we have of him before he committed suicide. And in this picture, he describes himself as transparent, so he has no physical features. His eyes are glued shut to the world, he can't tell what's real and what's not. And his brain is small and has no effect on his thoughts. So now we've seen all of this, we have to question um, why would some people consider psychiatry something that we do not need? Well, before we move on to that, I'd like to ask you some questions. True or false? Here are some possible facts. About 900,000 people commit suicide every year. Mental and substance use disorders are the leading cause of disability worldwide. Around 20% of the world's children and adolescents have mental disorders and problems. How many of these do you think are true and how many do you think are false? Okay, yeah, they're all true. And these facts are taken from the World Health Organization. So why would people be against psychiatry when there are people that suffer so greatly from mental illness? Well, the anti-psychiatry movement kind of started in the 1900s with the, the abolishment of... Um, lunatic asylums, but it was especially prevalent in the 1970s. Their main arguments were that psychiatry is subjective. Now this is true because if someone had a mental illness and they were being assessed by a psychiatrist, because there are no etiological factors or like biological causes of mental illness, like we've seen the dopamine hypothesis, but they only discovered that from looking at how they found out that antipsychotics reduce these symptoms, so then they looked at how the antipsychotics worked and then said, oh, therefore, that's how schizophrenia is caused, but this isn't necessarily true. So, psychiatry, psychiatrists would have to assess a person by looking at their symptoms and asking them to fill out questionnaires or listening to their experiences, and then if they fit a certain bracket, then they would get, be given a diagnosis. So that makes it subjective. Also, there's the validity of psychiatric labelling, which needs to be questioned. In 1973, uh, a psychologist called David Rosenhan conducted an experiment where he took seven people that he knew to be emotionally stable, and have no sign of mental illness, and be normal. Um, and he sent them to psychiatric wards and told them to go in, as, or hospitals, and told them to go in and say that they were hearing a voice that was the same sex as them saying words such as hollow, thud, and empty. Now, all of these people were admitted into the hospital and given a diagnosis of schizophrenia and told that they must stay there until they admit that they're ill and they take their medication. So obviously, this made people question the validity of psychiatric labeling. If, if psychiatrists were doing subjective work and if they were not able to tell that these people were saying, despite the fact that they only had one symptom, that they then claimed to have stopped once they'd been admitted into the hospital. Um, he then conducted another experiment. For six months, he said to um, workers in mental institutions that over the next six months, pretend patients are going to come in to test your understanding. So you need to like make a note, like still admit them into the hospital, but make a note of how many you think of pretend. Over the six months, over a hundred patients that were admitted were suspected by at least one person to be fake, and it turned out that these were all genuine patients. <coughs> Again, the validity of psychiatric labelling is questioned. Bad Pharma is up there because the pharmaceutical companies of today have a pill for practically everything. And although many save so many people's lives, you have to question the effectiveness of for mental illnesses. For instance, in 2011, six million people took got a, got a um, prescription for um, antidepressants. And if one in four people suffer a mental illness, most commonly depression, then to what extent do the pharmaceutical companies know how these drugs work or know how to treat these people? And how effective is it if mental illness is on the rise? In addition, they thought social control was a big part of psychiatry, so they wanted to get rid of psychiatry. And in the past, with things such as drinksomania, which is um, the belief that during the time of slavery, slaves had drinksomania if they had this 
bizarre belief or desire to be, become free from their masters. And then homosexuality for many years was considered mental illness as well. Obviously you think, yes, in the past people's views were different, how applicable is this today? Well, you could ask, is psychiatry just um, society's way of controlling unconventional um, personality traits such as suicide, unconventional religious beliefs, racial bigotry, unhappiness, anxiety, shyness, sexual promiscuity, shoplifting, gambling, overeating, smoking and illegal drug use. So there's that and there's also political abuse. So in the past during the world wars, the Nazis quite famously sterilised or euthanised over 500,000 people suspected of having mental illness and more recently um, in the Soviet Union, those holding opposing political and religious views were sectioned. And it wasn't until 1989 when American psychiatrists went over and assessed them that they released many of the people that were detained. Okay, so what was this based on? This was based on Thomas Sars, and he did, did not identify as an anti-psychiatrist, but he wrote a famous book called The Myth of Mental Illness. He has a famous quote, if you talk to God, you are praying. If God talks to you, you have schizophrenia. If the dead talks to you, you are a spiritualist. If you talk to the dead, you are schizophrenic. And he believes that a disease was something people have, whereas behaviour is what people do. And as we do not have any biomarkers for mental illness currently, apart from some theories of genetics, it's easy to see why some people would think that they don't exist. And in addition, he thought, as an alternative, the patient would be someone who is a malingerer. So what they do is they take their emotional distress and then turn it into a physical symptom, such as like the symptoms of depression, like overeating, oversleeping, things like that. So what criticisms are there for this? Well, at the time, there were many things such as syndromes, which would be diagnosed based on a set of symptoms. So they didn't have the cause that was known at the time, but they were still considered illnesses or diseases. Um, there are a lot of genetic studies on twins with schizophrenia, and if one twin has schizophrenia, the other is very likely to develop it as well. In addition, illnesses, diseases such as Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or psychosis have many mental effects as well. So if mental illness is linked to brain diseases, then are the brain diseases something that you could consider a mental illness? And the attack on malingering was that it fails to explain how and why 1% of the population exhibit the exact same symptoms of schizophrenia. Okay, so moving on, we're now at modern day psychiatry. And what they use is these diagnostic manuals. Um, the International Classification of Diseases is made by the World Health Organization. What it does is it has um, all of this information about every known disease and mental illness was included in the, in the 7th edition and we're now on to the, expecting the 11th in 2017. So every doctor and every psychiatrist will consult this to um, diagnose someone. Okay, so now we know a bit about it, let's try and be a psychiatrist ourselves. Okay, this is not Tigger. <laughs> Tigger's symptoms are a short attention span, restlessness and constant, constant fidgeting and being easily distracted. Any ideas what a psychiatrist diagnosis is? ADHD. Yeah, ADHD. Okay, this is Eeyore. Depression. Yeah, depression. And this is Goldilocks. This is a harder one. Any ideas? Yeah? A bit, but that, that would come into it, but it would be more antisocial personality. Now, can anyone see a problem with what we've just done? Uh, I'm hoping... Here, here's a clue. Here's a clue. This is North America. And the darker the states, the higher the percentage of children diagnosed with ADHD or ADHD heritage. Although that's another debate. Um, I say that there is proof to show that there is a difference between bad parenting and ADHD. Although bad parenting it makes ADHD a lot worse. Um, but all these kids, some of them under the age of 10, are being given um, medication to sedate them. And why are we doing this um, as a solution to 
things that, like, when children can't be handled by their parents, is this really the solution? So this brings us to modern day psychiatry. There's a movement at the moment called critical psychiatry, which is influenced a bit by anti-psychiatry, but anti-psychiatry has fallen um, for many reasons that I'll explain later. So we talked about over-diagnosis. There's also comorbidity, which is when many people with mental illness don't just have one, they have more than one. So they the problem there is if different psychiatrists are giving them different diagnoses, how reliable are these diagnoses? There are also moral problems with diagnosis. For instance, the majority of people with schizophrenia are young black African Arabian men. And they um, and this leads to many stereotypes. For instance, there's a stereotype that many young black men smoke weed, therefore weed leads to um, schizophrenia. And also there's a belief that, like incorrect belief that young black men are violent and then um, so this makes people therefore scared of schizophrenics. So all of these lead to moral problems of diagnosis. In addition, there's a the self-fulfilling prophecy. If you tell someone that they have a chronic illness in the form of mental illness that's going to last them their whole lives, this could become a self-fulfilling prophecy because they will feel powerless to do anything about it when in reality there's loads of stuff you can do to help you recover. Depression. Depression is a very common um, mental illness at the moment. However, there is an exception to it, and that's bereavement. So if someone shows all the signs of depression, but their cause is, um, or that it started after a death of a loved one, it's not considered depression as such, it's considered reactionary depression, or just in general, bereavement. <clears throat> so that makes us question, to what extent can any life um, experience lead to depression, such as bullying or divorce, these are natural things that could lead to depression, are they still depression? Um, the National Institute of Mental Health Treatment has conducted a depression collaborative research project, which is the world's biggest known um, research project evaluating the effectiveness of antidepressants, cognitive behavioural therapy, interpersonal behavioural therapy, and placebo. And what they found was that there was virtually no difference between the outcome of the people and what actually affected their recovery most was the early relationship between the patient and the therapist. In addition, there's over-medication of social differences in recovery. So different countries around the world, countries that are considered more economically developed, that have um, antipsychotic medication and things like that, the amount, the amount of patients in those countries that recover is far less than the patients in countries that do not have access to these drugs. So that's quite interesting. And also there's the inside paradox, which is where if someone is considered to have schizophrenia, they are considered to lack insight. But if someone who has schizophrenia admits, yes, I have schizophrenia, yes, I am ill, then you no longer are considered to lack insight. So there's no winning. If you say you're not well, they'll just treat you more. If you say you're well, then they'll agree. So, Modern psychiatry, how has it changed today? Well, there's been a rise in service user groups, such as the biggest one is the Hearing Voices Network. And what they believe is that, that hearing voices is a natural thing. So they'll say, how many of you have ever thought your phone was and then you look at it and it hasn't? Or how many people have you have thought, oh, someone's called my name and turned around and there's been people there? Or how many of you have had the thought that, oh, my friend hate me? They think these are natural. They think these are natural things that happen to people, although some people experience it more greatly. I personally think Oliver Sacks um, describes how we should treat psychiatry in these days very well. He says we have to place the biological and psychological within the context of a personal narrative and life history. And this takes the view that many psychotherapists have, which is where they take a person and say, yes, you, suffer, you, you are um, experiencing these difficulties. But we're not going to label you with um, a mental illness. Instead, we're going to work on how we can sort out your um, problems and age of recovery. There was the fall of anti-psychiatry, um, mainly because of the belief that if psychiatric illness does not exist, it denies the suffering of those who experience emotional distress. There's now more psychiatry in the community, so instead of locking people up in a mental institution, they will instead um, they will instead have a community mental health nurse and, and 
to do our trials at home. And also the land use has changed, so treatment has now been replaced with a pub and a patient is no longer called a patient, they're called a client. Okay, I'll now take any questions and then I have a few of my own that I want to like put out to you that we can debate because as some of you are considering being doctors um, or just any of you who will experience a friend someday who will have a mental illness and you need to know the facts about it so to treat it with the right um, in the right way. So does anyone have any questions?
treat them, and if you don't treat them, then they commit suicide. So where do you stand on like, how to treat mental illness? That is a really hard one, which is why like, the main reason I'm doing this presentation is to get people thinking that, about this, because at the moment people don't know where to draw the line. So personally, I think that um, if a person is a threat to themselves or society, then um, they they should be treated. I do, I, I'm not to say whether, because um, at the moment sexually still exists, so you can take a person and detain them within a hospital if they are a threat to other people or themselves. And I think that should still happen to like protect the need of the patient. But at the same time, things such as mechanical restraints, which used to be used, like straight jackets, um, handcuffing, stuff like that, isn't necessary. Um, I think you should, anyone can understand and come to reason, you can reason with anyone if you persist and if you have the, and if you talk to them on the right level, even someone who is psychotic, they will calm down eventually and you can prove to them, even though they're paranoid, that they are slightly safer if you help them, so it's a very difficult one. Yeah. Do you think it's worth um, money? I was actually going to ask um, all of you, like, where do we draw the line and should, um, between normality and abnormality. So, I think that if a person is experiencing extreme distress, then um, a diagnosis can help in a sense that it's practical for, like, telling their job why they can't come in and stuff like that. So, it makes them be taken more seriously. But at the same time, I fully agree with psychotherapists where they just take a person and say these are different aspects of your personality and things that you're experiencing, let's work on that. So I think like psychotherapy in many cases is the way forward and that combined with drug treatments can help greatly. So it's, it's a really hard one, it's like up to everyone individually and I don't think I know enough to say how it should be. And do you think it might be more effective to just focus solely on treating the symptoms of mental illness instead of trying to focus on like, the root of the cause of it? Yeah, I think so. I think that um, there is a lot of research on mental health and there's a lot of research on the effects of mental illness. To genetics, but um, there are no kind of like structural differences of the brain, even though someone that has brain damage can exhibit mental illness. Um, I think that if we focus, if we if we gave it like a 60-40 um, working, so like 60% focusing on developing treatments for them, and 40% researching causes, then that would be better because I think they both are important, and you shouldn't just completely ignore one. But um, I think immediate effect um, would be to treat the symptoms. So, um, but I think it's really important that people don't just resort to prescribing medication straight away. I think that they should at least combine medication with therapy, if not research with therapy. Yeah, anyone else? Yeah. I'm trying to take a quick word about that last point. Um, if uh, early diagnosis turns out to be useful in treatment, then that's a good reason to carry looking for causes, particularly genetically. Definitely. And the other thing is, have you looked at any of the sort of political or, or social influences on what um, uh, things are classified as diseases, mental diseases? And stuff about how. Um, the classic example is things like homosexuality used to be classified. Yeah, 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 I had a say Even today, there's things like um, grief has been um, <coughs> excessive grief is on the latest diagnostic panel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so. Yeah, I suppose we have a form in here now. Do you know if it's been moved? Oh, it's. I'll hear about something. Um. Does anyone else have any more questions or any opinions on these questions that I have? 
Yeah. 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 Yeah